as your key fabric is limitless and those who are subscribed to this channel know that i come here every single week sharing different ways in which you can use your ashoka to make yourself gorgeous gorgeous headpieces this video is not an exception i'm going to be showing you all how i achieved this gorgeous gorgeous double poof ashoka headpiece i made this headpiece for a client a few weeks ago she wanted to wear it for a thanksgiving occasion in church and you guys just let me know in the comments what do you think about this headpiece if you'll be interested in knowing all about the process of making this headpiece please make sure you watch this video to the end also if you're yet to be subscribed please do well to join us it's fun it's educative and it's just a safe space on here so please hit the subscribe button join the family share with your friends and like this video if you enjoy watching right guys let's get straight into today's video let's go right guys so i'll start off by showing you all you need you need your ashoki fabric or your fabric of choice you need a thick wording i zoomed in so you see the texture of the wording you also need something that could serve as an alternative to wording it's called hip pad okay so if you can't get your hands on wording feel free to substitute with this item it's called hip pad and i just cut a little piece just to show you guys what it looks like you also need your glue of choice for me i'm working with this uhu glue you could also substitute the uhu glue with your e8000 if that's what you like you need a matching color of thread because we'll be doing a bit of hand sewing you'll also be needing a ruler okay just to make you know working and everything very easy you need your scissors of course and here's the scissors that i'm showing here on the screen and this is me just showing you guys the ruler that i'm working with okay i'm working with this stainless steel ruler okay all right so the next thing you'll also be needing in this tutorial is your soldering iron you know that whenever i'm working with ashoki i like to divide my ashoki using soldering iron and that's my soldering iron right there to start off this tutorial you need two pieces of wording okay the dimension is on the screen the length is 20 inches and the width is six inches you also need one single strip of ashoki okay that will be serving as a foundation for the headpiece and this ashoki is 30 inches long you also need two inches of ashoki fabric that are 22 inches long okay please take note of the measurements okay i also left it on the screen for those of us that you know might forget feel free to take a screenshot if that's what works for you for the butterfly effect at the back you need two pieces of fabric that are 20 inches long okay i'm going to show you all how you can make that butterfly um design at the back of your headpiece so please make sure you watch the video to the end so you don't miss out on any important information all right guys so you need three pieces of actual key as well that are three inches wide okay the width of my actual key is about six and a half inches so just cut out three inches of fabric the very first thing we'll be doing is to form the poof design okay and this poof was achieved by rolling up my wording please pay close attention to what i'm doing get rid of any form of distraction that might make you miss out any important information so if you didn't get what i just did please rewind and look at how i rolled up my wording and after rolling it up i went ahead to pin it in place to just secure the wording in place and what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold on to the way i folded or rolled up my wording with pin and do that until i get to the end of the wording okay and just in case you guys hear any noise in the background please apologies for that okay I live in a noisy country nigeria and i can't really avoid occasional you know interference of noise all right guys so what i'm going to do now is just allow you pay attention to what i'm doing here and then we'll continue in this tutorial All right guys i hope you are still with me all right so what i'm doing here is i'm using my needle and thread to just sew on the folds that i just created you guys remember that i just concluded making a fold by just rolling up the fabric okay the wording so i just zoomed in right here so you see the way i'm passing my needle and thread replicate this on your own project and we would get the same result i'm going to speed through this process so i don't bore you guys okay my job is to keep your attention all the way to the end of this video so i'm going to move really really quickly if you have any questions please feel free to drop it in the comment section so this is just a footage of me just rolling through this process okay really really quickly if you've not hit the like button this is a good time to hit the like button okay please do that for me all right that's your way of saying thank you to me all right 
hit the like button subscribe if you're yet to and all that jazz okay Right guys, so now that I'm at the end of my stitch, all right, the next thing we need to do is to secure the stitch by just tying it up. And once that is done, cut off the excess thread using your scissors or your thread snipper. So these are the two pieces of wadding that I rolled up, all right. So the next thing we're going to do now is to fold, you remember the piece that is supposed to serve as the um, foundation for this particular ashoki. Yes, the 30 inches long strip of ashoki. All right, so we are going to fold the edge just a little bit, all right, and then fold it again along the width into two. In case what I just said doesn't make sense to you, please look at what I'm showing you on the screen. The 30 inches piece of fabric, okay? We have just one single strip of that fabric cut out. Remember at the beginning, rewind if you're this confused, all right? So you're just going to fold that fabric like this and then run your machine all the way across the length of the fabric on half of an inch okay and once that is done we'll return to the work table just to continue all right just to make things really really quick again what you're going to do now is to fold the edge of the two strips of 22 inches fabric okay these are the fabrics that will form the covering for this our wording okay because we can't use the naked wording we need to wrap it all right so you fold the edge of those ones of those 22 inch fabric as well on half of an inch and now that all of that is done it's time for me to turn this my 30 inch fabric inside out and what i typically use is my good old screwdriver okay i use my long screwdriver to just push the fabric until i get the right side on the outer part and once that was done i went ahead to just adjust the fabric in such a way that the joining okay where the stitch was made is at the center of the fabric if it doesn't make sense please also look at what i'm showing you on the screen i tried my best to demonstrate so you guys basically get the gist of this tutorial all right so once that is done, I'm also still going to go ahead to give the fabric a good press just to make everything look nice and smooth, okay? I'll take it to my ironing board and then give it a good iron press. All right, guys. So these are the fabrics that would cover the edge of our hoof. And this is the three inch fabric that we cut out at the beginning of the video. So all I did was just fold the edge really, really neatly and then left it alone. I went ahead to also add Velcro to the edge of my 30 inch strip of fabric. You guys remember that fabric? I placed one piece of Velcro on the top and the bottom of the fabric in such a way that when I cover the fabric over all, overlap the fabric over each other, it will sit really nicely on the head of my client. What I'm doing here is I'm marking one and a half inch along the width of my ashe, okay, okay? We are working on the 22 inch fabric now i hope you guys are following and i'm also marking seven inches along the length okay just to give myself a little slant at that point i would now place my wording and start to roll the fabric for this bit of the video talking might not really do it so i'll suggest that above listening to all that i'm saying please watch what i'm doing what i'm doing here is i'm just securing the ashe okay on the folded wording you guys remember how we folded the wording at the beginning of the video exactly so we are trying to cover up the wording in between this ash in between this ashe okay and that entails you know sewing the beginning point of the ashe okay on the wording and rolling just like you're trying to form i don't know what you are trying to form is this sausage roll now just covering up the fabric okay and once that is done we'll move on to the next stage in this tutorial in order not to distract you guys i'm going to keep quiet allow you guys watch this bit of the video and then we'll continue in the tutorial afterwards All right, guys, so now that I'm at the end of folding my ashoki over the wording, it's the time for me to also secure that point by sewing. And for sewing as well, just in case you're new to sewing and all that that process entails, just watch what I'm doing 
in this video this is another call to action please like the video if you're enjoying the tutorial so far and subscribe if you're yet to subscribe it's fun as you can as you can see right so please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any tutorial from me all right so this is what the folded and wrapped up wording situation looks like so i'm going to duplicate this because we need two all right and then once that is done it's the time to now just get to tidying up this um entire headpiece so this is what i have now i already cut out some parts of the video obviously so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cover up the ends of this poof situation okay you could decide to do hand stitches okay just to cover up that point but i started off doing hand stitches but after a while i realized that mm -mm, this thing is not for me so i went to my sewing machine to just run my machine over that point to just seal up the ends of this poof that we're going to be attaching to that foundation base okay well the base i keep calling it foundation but it's like the base for this headpiece all right this is me just fooling myself here thinking that i'm going to do hand stitches but after a while i stood up went to my sewing machine and went ahead to quickly just run some stitches over the ends of the poof all right and this is what we have here after i went to my sewing machine so what we're going to do now is to cover up those ends okay you see that if I leave it like this and just paste it on the base, it's not going to look nice, right? Exactly. So remember those three inches fabric that I showed you guys that I just folded the edge, just very little fold, okay? It's like quarter of an inch. I did the folds at the two ends. That's this, the piece of fabric that we're going to be using to just cover up the untidy ends of this our proof situation. And what I'm doing here is I'm just pinning those strips of fabric in place and folding it in such a way that it's going, to, it's going to just cover up the ends of this my double puff situation it's just going to cover the ends of the fabric neatly okay english is not my mother tongue so you guys please just in case my english is sounding one kind one kind please apologies but i hope you guys understand what i'm saying so at this point i'm pointing at right here i'm going to run my machine okay over that point i'm going to duplicate this at the under at the other end um of this um double proof okay and this is what i have here after doing the stitch so i'm just going to cut off that excess fabric right there using my soldering iron of course and once that is done i'm going to tuck in the ends of that three inch fabric that i sewed in place tuck it in like so and then also run my machine over it again just to seal up the end we are going to do a lot of sealing up and sealing up for the purpose of this tutorial but the end result is absolutely gorgeous okay so while going through the stress of making this remember that the final goal is something beautiful so i'm just showing you guys right there where you're going to run your stitch you're running your stitch while this piece of double proof situation is on the base okay just to secure everything and make it one single piece all right so what i'm going to be doing here now is i'm going to just do little stitches at the inner part of this double proof just to sew the proof together so they don't step separate what, from each other when you or your client decides to wear the headpiece on yourself or when your client wears it okay i hope you guys understand what i'm saying so that's just what i'm doing here just using my needle and thread just to sew it in place in such a way that it becomes tightly placed on each other and everything looks nice and smooth all right this entire process as well took a while i didn't want to bore you guys so i decided to just speed up the process and cut off some parts of the footage okay but it's the same thing i'm doing all over until i have a nicely secured piece what i have here are the pieces of fabric that will form our butterfly design at the back of the headpiece we're trying to make okay so what i'm doing here is i'm folding the fabric into two like so all right i first of all so the edge folded the edge by like half of an inch of both sides but i don't know why i don't have the footage so what i'm doing now is i'm just sewing it around to give myself like a rectangle situation remember that the full length of this fabric is 20 inches so by the time i folded it it gave me 10 inches and i'm just pleating it like so all right what i'm saying might not make sense but look at the way i'm pleating it using my fingers to just give me a butterfly effect i've already done the butterfly effect for one of the two pieces of fabric so what i'm showing you guys here is the second piece all right so i'm just going to take my time please 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 and once i've fully pleated it and i like what i have what i'm going to do is i'm just going to sew the pleat in place and i also would show you guys how you're going to sew it in place using your needle and thread all right so this is what one piece of the butterfly situation looks like so i'm just going to grab my needle and thread and then sew this sewing aspect oh my goodness it was a lot okay so you see that i had to get my piece of uh, microfiber cloth that cloth i typically use it to clean my camera lens but it's hard to come to participate in this activity all right so i went back and forth back and forth until i was sure that my butterfly was secured in place 
and then I dropped it aside. So I came back again to this our double proof, okay? And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to sew the base onto the double proof because if I leave it like this, the base will be detaching from the double the double proof, right? So I'm passing my needle and thread in such a way that it um, kind of marries the base and the double proof together. And I'm sewing in such a way that I'm giving my headpiece invisible stitches. And when I say invisible stitch, the thread that I'm passing is not showing at the other end of the design, okay? You want everything to look nice and smooth. So what you're doing is you're just passing your thread in such a way that you're just picking a little bit of fabric from the base and attaching it to the double proof at the bottom part and then just passing your needle and thread. Like I said, what I'm saying may not be doing this thing justice. So please pay attention to what I'm showing you. Also, if you've been enjoying this video, please do well to hit the like button. I'm going to keep quiet now, allow you guys to watch the way I'm achieving my invisible stitch. And once that is done, we'll be getting close to the conclusion of this tutorial. Right guys, so as you can see, the top part of this proof is not lifting off. So I'm going to repeat everything I did at the top and the bottom in such a way that everything sits perfectly. The next part that I'm working on is the butterfly effect. I lost some footage, but what I've done so far is I folded the three inch piece of fabric, the last one, into two and used that folded piece to wrap the center of this butterfly piece that we worked on earlier. So what I'm doing now is I'm attaching that butterfly effect onto one end of this velcro situation that i have going on you remember that i sewed the velcro at the top and at the bottom so the part where i sewed velcro on the bottom of the fabric exactly that part the other part of that the other side of that part of the hoof is where i'm sewing on this my butterfly effect okay and where this butterfly is feel free to put any design there you can put ruffles there you can put twists there feel free to just Customize this headpiece to your own taste, all right? But for me, because this is what my client asked for, I had to do the butterfly that she asked for, okay? So you see that the other Velcro piece is at the bottom of where this um, butterfly situation is. So after sewing it on, I went ahead to secure my stitch as usual by just tying up the fabric right there. I also lifted up the butterfly and applied some glue there just to help with securing the butterfly in place. And I also still went again in with hand stitches okay i always like to supplement or is it complements now my gumming and gluing situation with hand stitches as well all right so after doing all of this that was it for making this particular headpiece i went ahead to also do a bit of beading because i found that there was a particular side of this um entire headpiece that was just not giving what it was supposed to give okay it felt like it was lifting off and it wasn't just lapping over the way i liked okay so i went ahead to just use my beading needle and um, beads to just finesse that aspect of this headpiece at the end result was absolutely gorgeous this is the part where i used beads on you guys see that everything looks nice and sweet i have pictures of my clients working this headpiece it's on my instagram page so if you're not following me on instagram do well to follow me on there so you guys see some pictures of my clients working the pieces that i made for them this is the back view of this headpiece i went ahead to add this cute little I don't know what it's called. Now, is it charm or applique? I don't know what it's called. I shall put it there just to add some extra finesse to the end result of this headpiece. And this is what it looks like at the end of the day. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please do well to give me a big fat thumbs up. Okay, that thumbs up help, helps me know that you guys enjoyed watching. Also, feel free to share this with your friends and family. Okay, people that love tutorials like this, please share with them. Subscribe if you're yet to. And yeah, guys, I promise to see you guys in another video. Bye.